Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be finishing and completing our part two for the squash flour that we did a few videos back and hoping to bring all of these ingredients together to create a hopeful delicious dessert. Um, my intention with this was to gather several different things that we have done and freeze dried so far to combine into this recipe to show how well they come together um, once they are rehydrated. So the other item from that video was also the powdered milk that we did and it has held up great so far. We haven't used it for anything else, but um, this and the eggs that we did a few months ago will both have to be rehydrated prior to us putting them in the recipe. So we will go through that process. And the other ingredients that we have mostly are shelf stable. And you could probably use some items um, in place of them if you were trying to achieve um, that approach to this recipe. So the biggest one is the butter we have. There's five tablespoons of salted, softened butter here. And you could probably use coconut oil in place of that. Now, since this is my first time doing this recipe, I wanted to play it by the book and just go with what it said. But um, I think that that probably would be a good replacer. You wouldn't need it in liquid form. You'd want it um, pretty firm probably. Um, the second item that is for sure not shelf stable in this case is the unfiltered and unpasteurized apple cider vinegar that we have. Um, I believe that there are versions that are shelf stable, but this is the type that we use pretty regularly. Um, we have baking soda. I think you're good there. Vanilla, probably good as long as you keep it in a really consistent and dark area with, you know, not too warm temperatures. And then we have some salt and that's pretty good as long as you keep it dry and you are in an overly humid area. Um, we also have honey, which as long as the bees do their job correctly is shelf stable. And cacao powder, once again, just keeping moisture and probably light away from it. So we are going to bring all of these ingredients together to create a chocolate cake, probably more like a almost a brownie in a way, but not as dense and I will be going through each step and explaining as we go through it. So we will start the baking process. I went ahead and got us some water and we'll do the milk first. It should rehydrate pretty quickly, but obviously we just need to get things started. So the recipe calls for a quarter cup of milk in total. So I actually have an eighth of a cup of water in here and we will be pouring it into this cup here. And then we will be taking our measurement and I don't have an eighth of a cup, but I'll just be doing half of a quarter to mix in with our water. Our oxygen absorber is still inside. I'll just be scooping right around that. And here is our powdered milk. spoon here. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. There are still some granules in there and I'm not sure how smooth that this will become, but um, from all the things that I've read, reconstitution for milk is one to one. So we should be there in a little bit. So we will leave that there and move on to our eggs. Now we have four tablespoons of water for our eggs and the ratio of eggs is supposed to be a tablespoon of powdered egg to one tablespoon of water and I'll just mix that all up into this container. And we will put our eggs in there with it. the difference between the eggs and the milk, the eggs definitely seem to absorb water um, way more effectively. So um, we will let both of these sit while we go ahead 
and uh, preheat the oven and prepare our other ingredients. I went ahead and got some other utensils and of course a bowl for us to mix into and we will go ahead and preheat the oven. The first ingredient listed is the squash flour and it is to add a half cup of that so we will begin by doing that. I'm just going to use our quarter cup here. It's nice and light. very dusty. We have a little bit reserved still, but almost probably about half gone. Next item is our butter, and this is five tablespoons of room temperature butter that we are putting in here. The next item on our recipe is to add the eggs. I'm going to show you what this looks like a little closer. So here are our eggs, and you can see it's Pretty good. It's probably a little on the thicker side. I may have been a little heavy handed with some of those tablespoons that we did of the eggs, but I am fairly happy with the turnout of this. It's probably been sitting there for close to 10 minutes. So we will be adding that in. I'm sure it probably shows you a little bit about its kind of stickiness to the bottom. So we will add these into our recipe next. So in our eggs go now, four eggs. Just let that sit for a second. And the next item is our baking soda, one teaspoon of baking soda. Okay. The next item to add is our cacao powder, and it is a half cup of that. Much left in here, so we will be moving on to our other bag as well. Here is our milk. It's a good consistency. Um, it's got a good swirl, and obviously you can see the residue on there. So it probably could stand a little bit more water, but that's okay. We're just you know, trying things out for the first time, but we will go ahead and get this added into our recipe next. Our oven is preheated. And now our quarter cup of honey. I'm going to eyeball this. Now a tablespoon of vanilla will go in. And a dash of salt. The apple cider vinegar will be added after we combine and mix the rest of the ingredients. Here is our batter so far coming together and once again I have not added the apple cider vinegar that will be next and we will be putting this in the oven very soon. Give it a good swirl and one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. The vinegar set off a nice little reaction and kind of lightened the consistency quite a bit. So we will get this into our pan and get it into the oven. I'm using coconut oil to grease the pan. I'm trying to get out every little bit, but I will spread it out pretty evenly just to give it a fair shot. Here's our batter prior to placing it into the oven. It's pretty thick and it's actually 15 minutes bake time. So we will go ahead and get this in and hope it turns out. The 
while our cake is baking, and might I add that it smells amazing in here, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. But I wanted to go over the recipe. I did not come up with this recipe, and I did find it on a website called A Modern Homestead. And um, the woman that uh, has created this website and all the recipes on it has basically taken probably old family favorite things and made it so that they match a gluten-free, paleo, and GAPS diet. I'm not very familiar with the last one, but um, all the recipes are wonderful. I have only skimmed some of them just to get ideas for our own family needs for you know breakfast lunch and dinner but um, she provides good ideas of things to sub in we were talking earlier about possibly you could substitute the coconut oil for butter and the biggest one she talks about in this specific recipe is creating a more low carb option and that would be not to use honey um, to me another good option probably would be maple syrup i feel like it's not quite as sweet as honey but um, we use it for so much, so many recipes for cooking, baking, for adding to tea. If you want a, just a little touch of sweetness, it dissolves so nicely. Sometimes honey just does not dissolve well, especially if your drink is already cold. So um, if you're working with hot, then you're good to go. But I think that maple syrup would probably also be a good addition to this recipe. And it would even probably make it a little bit more runny or in the batter since it's not as thick as honey. But I will be sure to link all of that like I said and then you can discover all of the recipes and adventures that they are having over there on their page and right now we will go ahead and check and see how our cake is doing. Alright, let's check our cake here. Do the old knife test. seems to be coming clean. I just want to check it in a couple different areas once again since it is a recipe that I have not done before. It seems very light. I probably will let this cool a little bit in the pan just to ensure that it is firm up and maybe give it a little bit more stability before we take it out of the pan. So here is our chocolate cake. It is beautiful and it slides around in here very nicely so it should be pretty easy to get out. You can even see the little marks from the knife. So we will get this out and dig in. Slides out like a dream. So obviously that worked out very well. I think leaving it in there to cool was a very good idea just a little bit. It's still just slightly warm to the touch, but the edges are a little bit crisper, almost like a brownie would be. So I'm glad that we did wait and leave it in there. Obviously it released super well, so um, no harm there, but um, we will dig into this. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. All right, so we're cutting our cake, right? Yeah, yeah, woohoo! And what's it smell like? Does it smell good? Yeah. Oh, it smells like chocolate. Oh my goodness. So I wanted to get our probably most challenging taste tester on. You ready to try a bite? Yes? Okay. Okay. You like it? <laughs> Alright, Mommy's going to try a bite. Mommy's had quite a few chocolate cakes in her day. That's really good. Oh, I am very impressed. <laughs> the cake turned out. I would say that this is a definite win. There is not a bit of flavor of squash or anything crazy. <laughs> Let me help you. Obviously, Filson is enjoying this quite a bit and has eaten most of our piece, but the flavor is fantastic. The um, moist level of this is incredible. 
I am floored. Um, obviously, you never know what's going to come out of a recipe when you are flying blindly with uh, not doing the recipe um, and baking this before, but this is definitely a winner. We will be slicing it up into some pieces to freeze for later consumption to make sure that everybody gets to try some of it. Our taste tester went on to play, but that's fine. It gives me a moment to rave about how great this turned out. We devoured that piece so quickly and it's easy to see why it turned out so delicious. Um, I had my doubts, but I was extremely wrong. Obviously, when you hear things like, oh, gluten-free, like, oh, it must taste like cardboard, or, you know, it doesn't have flour in it, or it doesn't have regular white sugar, this proves that ideas like that are wrong. And um, I want to thank A Modern Homestead for taking the time to create recipes like this that help, you know, open your mind to trying new things. And I hope that you also visit her website and see the hundreds of recipes that she has. And obviously I have no doubt that you could sub regular flour in if you don't have the ability to create squash flour yourself. But I think that this is great now that I feel more comfortable with you know the process and how it turned out. There are other things that you can add to this. Um, I think espresso powder and or cinnamon would be fabulous flavors to add to this and it would really elevate that chocolate flavor a lot. But um, all in all, without anything, it is delicious and we will probably cut some up to freeze so we can eat it at our leisure and enjoy it. I'm not sure how long it would last if you just had it out, but it wouldn't last long because it would be eaten quickly. <laughs> but um, if you like the content that you saw today and any of the things that we've done in the past and you haven't subscribed to us, please do. You will be notified when future videos are set to premiere or post. And um, until then, I will be looking up other recipes to uh, continue to try, especially from a modern homestead. And um, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.